Hi there, here I am at Gen Con 2013 with Chris Pramus of Green Run in Publishing. Chris, how's Gen Con been for you so far? Uh, great. Uh, you know, we always have an awesome time at Gen Con. There's, you know, so much energy here. People are really enthusiastic about games, and uh, it's, a, it's a good rejuvenating uh, moment of the year for us because online you always get a lot of negativity, but at Gen Con, you know, people want to come and tell you how much they're enjoying your games and, you know, just, it's nice. Yeah, so Gen Con's yeah. a great place to get, you know, good positive feedback. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel some of the energy. Yes. Yeah, and the excitement and enthusiasm. Absolutely, yeah. Because uh, a lot of times, you know, people don't think necessarily to drop an email that's just like, oh, I'm enjoying your game. Sure, yeah. Whereas angry people are like, oh, oh, yeah, tell you something. They'll, they'll, they'll be there immediately or on yeah. Twitter or wherever. Yeah. yeah. So what, what's your hottest selling item this year? Uh, it was Power Profiles. Uh, it's the latest book for Mutants and Masterminds. Uh, it's basically a, uh, a big book of pre-built powers uh, organized by themes. So if you want to build a character who's got like ice powers, you go to the ice chapter, you can look at those uh, powers and pick which ones you want, and then you're good to go. Sure. And Mutants and Masterminds is what, 10 years old now? Uh, it's 11 now. 11 years old now. Yes. I remember when that first came out, and it's now on its third edition. Yes. Uh, in the last year or two, you've been working with DC Adventures. Correct. Uh, so we got a uh, license with DC Comics, and we took the uh, Mutants and Masterminds rule sets and married it with the DC Universe. Um, and so uh, all the DC Adventures and the Mutants and Masterminds books are cross-compatible because they share the same system. Uh, so you can get DC Heroes, put them in your M&M campaign, uh, you can get the M&M GM guide and you know, use it in your DC game and so on. So it's, uh, it's a nice crossover. So do you get many people complaining you have the stats of their favorite superhero wrong? Uh, no, you know, I expected more pushback on that. Um, um, Ray Winninger, uh, who was the, uh, the developer for Mayfair's DC game uh, back in the 80s, um, he, uh, he tells a story about how someone in a Captain Marvel costume came up to their booth one right. day saying, oh, I have a problem with my stats in the game. <laughs> <laughs> but we have not had that. Sometimes so. you just need to back away slowly. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so tabletop. Yes. So last year you were, uh, was it last year? Uh, so it was, it was. We filmed it last year, but it was shown year. this year. Yes. Uh, with Will Wheaton's show about board games. But yes. uh, for a couple of episodes, they covered an RPG, which was your Dragon Age RPG. Yes. Could you tell us how that came about? Sure. Uh, well, so Will and I have been friends for many years now. And um, uh, at Gen Con and, uh, and at PAX, usually, um, for the last few years, we would get together and, and play Dragon Age. Um, and uh, it, was, it came to be referred out to as PAX Tackle, as our, our yearly get together at PAX. Um, and Will really liked the game, and so when he was uh, putting together Tabletop, he called me and said, well, I'm going to do the show, and, uh, you know, I love Dragon Age. What do you think about, about us covering the game? Well, of course, great, sure. you know. And uh, I was like, well, what do you, I was like, I could run it, but, you know, would you be willing to come to, down to L.A. and run it? It's like, of course I would. <laughs> so uh, they're like, well, we don't really have a budget. I'm like, it's cool. Like, I will spend $300 in a plane ticket, you know, because I'm pretty sure this is going to be the best marketing Dragon Age is, is ever going to yes, have. This is definitely going to make me more than $300. Yes, yeah. exactly. And did it. Uh, yes. Uh, so after the uh, episodes aired in February of this year, uh, you know, we saw a massive spike in sales. It was basically like the first set was was just released. We had those sorts of things. Mm. Um, and then it's been strong all year. And what's been awesome about Gen Con is that I've had many people come up to me and say, oh, I saw you on Tabletop. I bought Dragon Age. And we've been running a campaign now. We've never role-played before. And, it's, and we're having a great time. Fantastic. Yeah. It just, you know, it feels really good to see that you know, the message went out and was received, and now people are having fun and discovering the hot move. Right, that's made you quite famous, hasn't it? You were telling me a story earlier. Would you care to repeat that? <laughs> uh, which one? TSA. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, I was coming back from New York City, um, and uh, and I had to go through security like you do, and I was like, uh, I'm taking off my belt and everything. And so the guy, like, checks all my credentials, and he's like, okay, you know, like, you can go. It's like, by the way, you were great on tabletop. <laughs> <laughs> so that was very funny. A, yes. a brief taste of what it's like to be famous in the real world, outside uh, yeah, our, our little, little bit. peak niche. Well, it's strange, because normally people don't know what game designers look like. Mm. And so um, as it happened, I was in Victoria, B.C., uh, the weekend after the first tabletop episode came mm. out. And I was just wandering the con in between my events and things, um, looking at stuff, 
and uh, usually I can do that anonymously. Yeah. And uh, people were like shouting out, like Dragon Age, and you know, like great job. It's like, do you oh. think maybe there's, there's a trend towards game designers being more? Um maybe public is the wrong word, but more recognizable these days. I think so, because, uh, you know, like 20, 25 years ago, uh, oftentimes designers' names weren't even on the covers of yeah. the, their products, um, and, you know, there, basically there wasn't the internet, and, and now part of being a creative person, whether a game designer, musician, writer, whatever, mm. uh, you know, is is having your presence on social media, yeah. you know, and using that to, to promote your work and interact with fans sure. and things like that. So I think that leads to people having a, like a more personal connection to you, yeah. but also, you know, knowing more who creates the things that they really like. Yeah, sure. And do you enjoy that? Is that a side of yeah. the business that... No, I do. It's, I mean, it's nice to hear from people, yeah. you know. Um, and, and it really keeps you grounded because, you know, like, it, you're talking to people about their real lives, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and it's just nice to see. Sure. Um, yeah. uh, so, the Ennies the other night. Yes. How many did you walk home with? Uh, well, so the, the Dragon Age um, episodes of Tabletop uh, won gold, yep. which is nice. Um, our Night's Watch source book for Song of Ice and Fire role playing uh, won a. No, oh, it was also a gold. Uh, and then um, I contributed an essay to uh, Wolf Bauer's Kobold Guide to World Building, yep. and that won two Ennies, so I have one tenth of each of those. <laughs> so that's two and two tenths. <laughs> yes. And how um, much does that add up to in total? You must be in uh, the 20s or 30s by now. Uh, there was yeah. certainly a period where I seem to remember one year where you walked home with like eight or ten. Yeah, I th yes. I think the best we did was ten or eleven in one year. Uh, but basically, since like the rise of Paizo, like those days have ended. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we, yes, we usually pick up a few awards every year. We've got, we've, I think we have over thirty. Yeah. Um, I can send you actually a picture of our house. We've got the awards in one corner of the stairway, and then a bunch of them up on the wall. Wow. So, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> That's fantastic. And I yeah. presume you have some other awards from other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Origins Awards, uh, sometimes other little awards pop up for a couple of years and yeah. then go away. And uh, yeah, we won an InQuest Gamer Award for our Torches and Pitchforks card game. Right, and yeah. InQuest hasn't been published now for, I don't know, five years. Or okay, yeah. So, right. <laughs> uh, so uh, Game of Thrones, yeah. you run a license, to, well, you sell a license to game. Yes. Uh, I understand that you contacted George R.R. R. Martin directly to... Yeah. Um, well, so Guardians of Water had the license 10 years ago or so, and then they sort of flamed out of business, and then no one had it. Yeah. And uh, about a year later, you know, I was like, you know, it's like a really important piece of fantasy right mm. now, and there really ought to be an RPG for it. And uh, I didn't know anyone who knew George, so I just found his address on the internet, and I just sent him a cold email saying, hey, I run this RPG company. If you like, I'll, uh, you know, I can send you some sample books. And he's like, sure, here's my address. So um, so I knew that he was a huge comic fan um, as a kid, well, still, but, you know, yeah. as a youngster. And then um, he had done the whole wild card series uh, with his author friends that actually came out of a role-playing game campaign. Mm. Um, it was originally a super world RPG campaign that led to the creation of wild cards. So I sent him a bunch of I mean, some Masterminds books because it was not only supers, but they were some of our best looking books there, right. full color. Um, and he's like, oh, these look great. And so uh, we actually ended up making a deal for wild cards first uh, because he's like, you should do wild cards. And he said, okay. <laughs> um, and then after that, we were able to make the deal for, uh, for Ice and Fire. So. And it's a brilliant book, too. What's that? It's brilliant, too. Yes, yeah. thank you. It was a compliment. I was, uh, <laughs> I was, I was paying you a compliment. <laughs> it's a little noisy. In it is a little noisy, and the accent might be confusing you slightly. Uh, I've been to England many times. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, highlights of the con for you so far? Uh, well, so last night, um, I ran a game, a Freeport Pathfinder game, um, and uh, we did a, a Kickstarter earlier this year. Um, to do a new version of our of the Freeport City book, right? Yeah. Uh, that would be a 512 page full color hardback specifically for Pathfinder, because we think that's where where most of our old fans are these days. Um, and uh, and we had someone pay a thousand dollars to have me run a game for them at right. Gen Con. There were supposed to be four guys, but two of them couldn't come. So well, after paying a thousand dollars. Uh yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it's thousand dollars total, not per guy. Oh right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I recruited uh, Rob Schwab, who 
is working on D&D Next, has been working at Wizards for years, but used to work for me. Yeah. And Stephen Radney McFarlane, who's ex-Wizards current Paizo, yes. to be the other two players. And so uh, so we just had a ball. So yeah, we, uh, that would be a blast. Yeah. Um, Lua Gresta, who's uh, uh, one of the freelancers from Razor Coast, uh, part of a, a group of freelancers called the Wear Cabbages. They do this like invitational party every year at one of the hotels, and he offered to give me a private room there to run the game. Right. And I was like, great. So we had a waiter. Here we could get food and drinks, and uh, and they set up a coffee station. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. And so you have a hard life. <laughs> so yeah, I just got to run a Freeport game for people who really liked Freeport and a couple of my friends, and uh, yeah, it was great. That sounds like a blast. Yeah. So what can we expect to see from Green Ronin in the coming year? Uh, so uh, we're going to release set three for Dragon Age, which is long awaited, but uh, will hopefully be up before Christmas. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do a starter set for the Song of Ice and Fire game, because uh, right now our core book, um, our core book is uh, uh, really a gamer book. You know, it's a big, thick hardback. Right, yeah. And if you're just like a casual TV fan, yes. you're probably not going to pick yeah, that up sure, and be yeah. like, "This is yeah. for me." So we're going to do, uh, you know, probably a boxed intro set and release it the month that the TV show comes back on for its next season. And we have book trade distribution, so we're hoping we can, you know, get some more people into the hobby that way. Um, and then uh, for Eminem, uh, we'll be revisiting Freedom City next year. Okay. It's a signature setting for the game. Uh, Freeport will be coming back in that new book. Um, and, uh, and then we're going to hopefully have uh, the next game that uses the Age system. That is the system that powers Dragon Age. Yeah. It's called the Adventure Game Engine. Um, and we're creating a new fantasy world. Um, and, you know, because it's going to be all ours, uh, you know, we'll be fully in control of release dates and we'll have to deal with sure. approvals and, you know, some of the downsides yeah, of licensing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we have, honestly, you know, we did, we've done so much licensing in the last few years, we're kind of itching to, to do more original world creation. Yeah, so of course, yeah. That'll be fun to get I mean, you have how many li big licenses? If you, you, you've had uh, DC, so, obviously, you've yeah. had... Uh, Dragon Age. Yep. You've had uh, a Game of Thrones license. Yep. What else? Am I missing anything? Uh, well, then before that, we did Thieves World. We did no. Black Company. Uh, we did oh, the of course, yeah. I that. The yep. Red Star um, and the Nocturnals. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Anyway, yes. So, yeah, yeah so the <laughs> licenses are something you've been involved yes. in. So yes. moving ahead on to more sort of... Well, we, we had that whole relationship with Games Workshop where we were the design studio for Warhammer Fantasy yeah, Roleplay yeah. Second Edition. And, you know, we produced, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 books for them in addition to the stuff that we did. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what have you seen here at Gen Con that's caught your eye? Other than your own stuff, which is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Hairbrain Schemes, which is uh, it's the... It's Jordan Weissman from FASA. It's his new company. Yep. Uh, he's partnered up with Mitch Gittleman, uh, who did a lot of the um, um, Battletech computer games yes. over the years. Yep. Yep. Uh, so they just did the Shadowrun Returns. Uh, they had a big Kickstarter, made over a million dollars. So they did the Shadowrun Returns uh, game for the iPad and so on. But their next game is called Golem Arcana, um, and they're trying to do something that marries current tech with miniature play. Um, and uh, it's, it's very intriguing. Um, when I was working at Wizards uh, on miniatures like 12 years ago, we looked into like putting microchips into miniatures bases and maybe using a reactive surface you know, uh, yeah. to too many yeah, play that yeah. way. But it was too clunky. But now, you know, it's 10 years of technology. And the technology's there. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it might be there. So I'm, I'm really interested to see um, if they can pull that off. Sure. Uh, that's cool. Are you guys uh, sort of thinking of adopting some, you know, maybe some iPad apps or uh, iOS stuff? Uh, if we can find a way to do it affordably. Right. Um, there's a bunch of, of studios that sprang up to do app support. Yeah, yeah. But um, they, they, most of them didn't really understand the nature of the tabletop game industry. Sure. So they'd be like, oh yeah, we can make you a character app for $30,000. I'd be like, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, no thanks. If only I had $30,000. <laughs> yeah, so you understand. Yeah. <laughs> game designers do not make a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's been a pleasure, Chris, yeah. as always. Can Thanks we expect to see you in the UK anytime soon? Uh, well, hey, if uh, some convention would like to bring me over, I'm always happy to get uh, uh, I've done two Dragon Meets. That's always a blast. I'll, I'll work uh, on them. Yeah. Try to get them to bring you over again. <laughs> Absolutely. Because we've started covering the Dragon Meet video-wise in the recent years. So oh, right on. We hope to continue doing that. So if you're there one year, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I mean, I love London. So, you know, it's really no, <laughs> it's no pain to come <laughs> hang out in London for a few days. <laughs> Just bring your umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it's been a pleasure, Chris. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.